All right, uh, let's uh, begin here. The Bosasa scandal has tarnished President Cyril Ramaphosa's image as a knight in shining armor. Last week, Ramaphosa backtracked on an explanation of uh, 500,000 rand that the controversial company paid. He's told Parliament the money was for consulting by his son. Turns out the payment was in fact a donation towards Romaposa's campaign for the ANC presidency. He says he was unaware of this donation. Bosasa, as you will remember, has since changed its name to African Global Operations and uh, its executive director, Papa Lishabane, joins me in studio now. Mr. Lishabane, thank you very much for your time perhaps uh, let's start uh, with the name change is that uh, something deliberate perhaps uh, to try and um, reverse the misfortunes that have been associated with the name Bosasa um, good morning Chloe, and thank you for your time funny not I think name changes come and go um, there's a few uh, issues that prompted the name change Number one is that we, for the past 19 years, have been focusing on just the South African market, and we have a plan of uh, expanding into the African and market and hopefully globally. And African Global came about purely because of that uh, trajectory and the intention to be able to go outside the boundaries of the Republic. Let's uh, talk about the business of Bosasa then, or African Global Operations, as it's now called. You've been in business with government for over 10 years. You've been doing business with government for over 10 years. Which or how many contracts do you have with which departments? Yeah, uh, we, we've been over, it's, it's been over 10 years. Um, what you'd understand is that the type of work that we do is niche. Right? So we, we are in the line of business that, for instance, we have uh, the Department of Home Affairs. We provide a facility for them that houses um, illegal um, inmates. Now, the reality of it is that for you to be able to get into that business, you first need to have a facility. And the, the requirement is that you need to have a 4,000-bed facility ready to be occupied. Now, is that the only department you have a contract with? No, that's, that's one. Okay. We have a contract with the Department of Social de uh, Development. Uh, we provide uh, services for awaiting trial young people. We are the only company in this country that does that. Uh, Home Affairs, we are the only company that uh, houses um, illegal uh, detainees. We are the only company that um, provides awaiting trial facilities. We also do a business with, with AXA on the security front. We do business with uh, the Department of Correctional Services. I mean, for the longest time, we provide meals. I mean, there's an act of parliament that says the Department of Correctional Services need to pro focus on what they do, and providing meals is not their core competency. Latest reports on correctional services is that uh, you no longer provide uh, security services for correctional services. Correct. Is that true? Correct. When did that contract end? Gee, probably eight, nine years ago. What we did there is we're providing CCTV access control but body scanning equipment and we're manning control rooms for them. Okay, so uh, you remain in contract with them? No, that contract expired and uh, life goes on. Okay. What's the value of these contracts, Mr. Lishabane, because my understanding is that, or as reports would go, 10 billion rand has been reported as the amount uh, that in total uh, you have amassed since you've been doing business with government. Well, I don't know where they get that, that number, um, 10 billion. And, and again, that number has been brandished. I don't know if people have gone and, and audited our books, but it's nowhere close to 10 billion, that I can tell you. How much is it? Uh, from the top of my head, I can't give you that number, but I can go and check it out. But I can guarantee you it's nowhere close to 10 billion. Let, let's talk about the, the Watson family, yes. which essentially is the family behind this business. That family, its relationship with the ANC dates back to the years of anti-apartheid activism. We're not going to get into that, but the core of my question is, has this family been using its proximity to the leadership of the ANC in order to get these government contracts? Well, that's the narrative that is out there and which we strongly contest. The reality of it is that uh, there is no doubt that since the years of the 70s, that family has been involved in, in the struggle uh, in this country. Uh, there's no doubt about it.
Um, the reality of it is that the proximity to the business, as it is narrated today, has got nothing to do with how we do business. And I'm going to give you some numbers for the purposes of uh, this conversation. Is that since 2006 to date, we have submitted over 400 tenders. We only got nine. And this narrative that says, no, your proximity to business, um, uh, you know these people, you've done this, this, and for them. And therefore, if that was the case, we should be sweeping everything that we submit. And, uh, and those numbers are real. I mean, I can give you those numbers. All right. So perhaps the numbers they will uh, talk to me about is the donations to the ANC. Why do you donate so generously then to this party? Well, interestingly, we just don't donate to the ANC. You don't donate to the ANC? We just don't donate to the ANC. You've never donated to We them. have, but I'm just saying the ANC is not the only organization that we donate to. I'll give you a few examples. We've donated a million rand to a Christian organization that uh, galvanizes a, a million men to worship. We've donated two million rand to a campaign that was assisting matriculants study and prepare for matric exams through uh, media, uh, no, not media houses, but uh, uh, movie houses. Do you donate to other political parties? You've already admitted you donate to the ANC. Yes, I sir. still want to know how much you donate to the ANC, but do you donate to other political parties as well? Well, the ANC, the nice thing about it, we can't donate if you don't request. Everything that comes to us is people who request. Um, anybody else has come, has come to us and if they come to us and it makes sense, we we'll look at it and we're quite happy to, to do so. So if any other political party had to come to us, like in this instance, whether it be the Christian organizations, whether it be the educational institutions, they'll come to us and we look at the, at the request and if it makes sense, by all means. We, we are a responsible corporate citizen. Making a donation to a political party, the ANC, is one thing but donating to individual leaders is something else altogether. What's the motivation behind that? In fact, it's not even donating to individual leaders, like you rightfully alluded to. We've been involved with the ANC, we've been involved with people. Remember, some of the people that you speak about are not people that we met when they become ministers. And there's a reality here that people don't want to, to deal with, is that since the apartheid days, if those relationships were struck that time, we can't very well then say, if I've known Oweli for 40 years, and when Oweli becomes a minister, then I must stay aloof. And you might just find that in the 40 years, uh, Oweli and I had, had some sort of relationship. If you country. don't donate to individual leaders of the ANC, then why did you donate specifically to the campaign of the president, 500,000 rand in the lead up to the ANC conference? We, again, we did not donate 500,000 to the African, to the campaign of the president. And that is the narrative that is out there to say African Global donated. Gavin Watson donated. Why he donated is an issue between him and whoever requested him. But as a company, we have not donated. And I mean, it's very clear. It's that people for their own selfish intentions choose to say African Global donated. We did not. So Gavin Watson admits he donated. Uh, has he provided reasons for why he donated this money to the campaign of the president? Well, from what we said, we're not even interested in why. I mean, if Gavin decides to give money to 32 crutches in Rivoli, it's entirely up to him. The reality of the matter is that Gavin Watson did not uh, donate for the purposes of whatever it is. He donates, he decides it's his money, and we can't hold him accountable. Why did that money then not come directly from the bank account of uh, Gavin Watson? Again, that's a conversation that Gavin Watson will be able to deal with. The reality of it is what, uh, for the purposes of this conversation, is we are conf we're confirming that Gavin Watson paid the amount. But also what is interesting <laughs> is, is, is that uh, over the past weekend, it's been confirmed that over 200 companies, individuals, entities donated to that campaign. I find it very apt that today only one company has been vilified for, or one person has been vilified for having donated, which I find very strange. Why, why would Gavin Watson go to such lengths as to try and use a front company in order for him to make this personal donation to present Ramaphosa's campaign. Why did he have to go through such a rigorous process if well, this was done in good faith? Like, like I say, I would dearly like to tell you why 
given and how he was thinking and why he did it that way. I think what we have confirmed is that that money never came from African Global and he's sitting here representing African Global. I can confirm that that never happened that way. How is he responding then to the president wanting to pay that money back? In fact, is he prepared to receive that money back? Well, from the conversations I've had with him, he says, if that is the prerogative of the president, what can he do? He's quite happy to have it back. He's happy to have it back. So, Does that offend him? Not really. I think it is out of respect of the views and opinions of the president. Remember, um, in, in this instance, whether he gets offended or not, then for me, it's neither here nor there. The reality of it is that if the president takes a line, um, it, it's out of good respect that uh, you, know, you tell that line. Does it not talk then to perhaps an ethical conduct uh, in the manner in which either Gavin Watson or his company conduct business. Why would the president want to give money back if this money is not dirty money, if you like? Well, the, uh, from where we sit, there's nothing unethical about it. From where we sit, there's nothing uh, untoward about it. And the reality of it is that uh, w what is the litmus test for us? Was this money given to get a pair of shoes? Right? For, as a company, that is what we should be looking at. Uh, and we have quite clear as an organization that whatever amount that was paid had nothing to do with our business. It was a personal transaction between Gavin Watson and whoever requested the money, and we don't want to get into that terrain. Uh, Mr. Lishaban, you seem to be running away from this allegation that your company is giving monies, and incidentally, it's monies to members, senior members of the governing party. How does your party give monies, whether you call it personal loans to people like um, Vincent Smith from Parliament, um, you go to politicians' homes, governing party politicians' homes, their private homes, you install high-end security there, and you've got no interest in getting any of these monies back. Isn't that a donation to individual leaders of the ANC? Well, the reality of it is that if, if, if that is the case, the question that, again, we ask ourselves is why those donations? Like I said to you, some of these are long-standing relationships that we've had with people before they even became ministers. Some of those installations happened before some of these people became ministers. The reality of it is that those donations or installations had no direct effect. We did not install for us to get business. Right? And it is out of the relationships that we have. If I know Koli and Koli has a breakdown and Koli is asking me to pay for a, a pair of tires, what do I do? Is I say, Koli uh, is going to interview me next week. People are going to say he's giving me the interview because I paid for a set of tires. Or is the relationship that I have with Koli that drives that process? Mr. Sharon, have you since invoiced Tabang Makwetla for the installations you did at his home? Because he says he's been begging you to please give him an invoice. Why aren't you doing so? Because from, from, from where we sit, again, the, the, that uh, installation had nothing to do with the uh, reciprocate, uh, whether it's going to re reciprocate in any way. We've done that purely because of the relationship that we have with the person and the need that those persons had at the time. So there was, there was no cause and effect from where we are uh, sitting that said, you've done this to get that. Like I said, I've given you the numbers that said, Tamang, we've done the installation, but we didn't get are it. Are you going to invoice him? Because he says he's been asking. Well, uh, we'll, we'll have that conversation with him. If he wants that invoice, we'll talk about it. So you're not willing to say here and now that you are going to get monies back as a result of the security installations you... Well, like we said, our relationships are, if, are more important than money. But if people there sort of feel, if Tawang feels that this is what he wants to do, I can't speak on his behalf, but he, I know that he's gone on record to say he would like to, to pay that money. Maybe that's a conversation we'll have to we'll, we'll invoice him. But the reason we didn't is, again, it was driven by relations, long-standing relationships that we've had with people. All right, so since relationships are not about money, uh, can you confirm just for the record that you had installations uh, in chairperson, ANC chairperson, Gwede Mantasha's home? Did you install uh, security upgrades at uh, Nomvula Mukunyane's home? Well, I know about Gwede Mantasha's home. That I can tell you that. And again, when that happened, 
He was not a minister. He was, I have known Gwede, and I think the record speaks for itself. I've known Gwede, I've known his entire family. I'm part of that family. And when, and, and when whatever happened at his home and he was in distress, he called on me, not as a member of African global necessarily, but he called on me personally as a child of that family. And that is what I'm saying. That had absolutely nothing to do. And these installations were both in his home here in Gauteng and, and the Eastern other Cape. ones in the Eastern Cape. Correct. Mr. Shabana, just as we end this conversation, talk to us about uh, your business relationship with um, the president's son, Andy Ramaphosa. What kind of business are you in? Well, we've been doing business with Andy for over a year. Over a year. I mean, contrary to what has been spoken about, because the, the mixing the 500,000 and whatever it is. But so it started in 2017? Yeah, a long time ago that we've been doing When this. in 2017 specifically? Gee, I left probably, I think, Feb or somewhere there. Um, I stand corrected on that. But, but we have a con contract with him. He provides uh, consultancy services. Again, it speaks to the line that we are trying to achieve as an organization. Consulting in what exactly? Well, uh, we, we'll, we'll talk about, say, things like business facilitation. And I'll tell you why, what, what I mean by that. Is that we said, as Busasa, we moved to become African Global. What is the intent? The intent was for us to be able to look into... What services does he provide? Uh, can I finish? Right? We want to go into the African market. And we looked at people that have got um, contacts based on what we do. So basically what he does is he goes out there and he tries and finds uh, countries that would look at the type of service that we provide and he would link us, well, link us up with those countries. And 500,000 rand is essentially... No, that was nothing to do with that. Absolutely nothing to do with that. So what was the 500,000 rand for? Remember the 500,000 was the campaign. Mm -hmm. And the lawyer has got a contract that provides uh, the consultant service giving us traction into the African continent and it had absolutely nothing to do with the 500,000. Are you able yes, to tell us tough. what you pay him for these services? I can go and check the numbers. You don't have them right now? I don't have them at the top of my head. All right. But I can confirm with you that there is a contract that exists that I can confirm with you. All right, Mr. Shaban, thank you very much for your time. Pleasure thank you very much. Brother. Thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, that was uh, the director, executive director at uh, African Global Operations, formerly known as Bosasa, and uh, its representative here is uh, Mr. Baba Le Shabane, who speaks for that.